All right, what is up guys? We are back today uh, for something a little different, something I actually haven't done in quite a while. Um, we're gonna go through just kind of like a normal day, um, showing you guys everything from the supplements I'm uh, using, um, to the food I'm eating, to kind of what I'm doing in terms of training today. Nothing too exciting in training today, I'm just spinning today, but we'll show you guys all that. Um, so we got up a little while ago, it's 8.45 now, got about up at about eight. Um, just been having some coffee. Um, now we're gonna get a little bit of electrolytes in us, something I do every morning. Um, and now I'm lucky enough that we have the new raw bum hydration. Uh, this is the lemon lime, which is awesome flavor. Um, those kind of flavors are some of my favorites, just like those refreshing kind of citrus flavors. So we're gonna get one pack of that in there. Um, and then if you guys saw my story yesterday um, with the breakdown of some of my revised supplements, you'd see that first thing in the morning, two of the things I take are the thyroid and the lipid. Um, so these ones are definitely best to take fasted. Uh, so I take three of the thyroid and take seven lipid. Good. And get those into me, get some electrolytes into me. Down the hatch. Okay, so we're gonna get a little more coffee in, get these electrolytes in, and then we're actually gonna go for a cold plunge this morning. So we'll go get in some nice two degree water, um, especially with doing a little more running training. Um, you know, that impact on my hips, feet, ankles, um, knees. I was like, what did I forget there? I forgot something. <laughs> um, it definitely feels good. I don't know how much confirmed science there is with its, you know, help in actual reducing inflammation, all that. Um, but it definitely feels really good. Your legs feel a lot fresher after. Um, and it's just like a good test to kind of push yourself and get in that cold water um, and kind of see if you can push yourself a little bit longer every time. So I'm going to get some of these in, head over to Nobility where we're going to cold plunge. Um, so we'll catch you guys over there. Cold here, guys. Let's go cold plunge. Are you going to say something? Well, you're asking me the question. <laughs> Favorite sneaker to work out in? A pair of One Lows or a pair of Endorphin Speed 3s are, are, have both been good. And then favorite shoe to like wear daily or like out. I mean, I've been I've been on the Croc train now. It's Paul, Paul and them with his tile foot have inspired me to get a pair of uh, a pair of Crocs. They're actually very comfortable. So I've been wearing those probably most of the days recently. Um, and if not, yeah, I mean. You know, I got a couple pairs of Jordan 3s I really like. They're really comfortable. Um, so, yeah, I have the Crocs, the Jordan 3s. I still wear my One Lows quite often. They're just, like, easy to slip on, slip off. You know, some of the 3s, you know, with a little higher uh, on the ankle, you know, you got to, like, actually get down, like, un loosen them up and stuff, or you're, like, shoving your foot in there and ruining the back of them. So One Lows are, like, you know, with a low cut, easy to just slide your foot in and out, good for daily wearing. So, yeah, any of those. What about these? <laughs> That's like my worst nightmare of a shoe. Coming from the guy that wears Crocs. Yeah, the Crocs are comfortable. I guess those are, is that oh. why you wear those? Because they're comfortable. And very warm. Yeah. We're going to cold plunge, so like that's nice after. That's true, yeah. I should have worn at least socks. That was a bad idea on my part, to be honest. So. Will you also be trying cycling? Yeah, I mean, not road cycling for the time being. Um, maybe eventually. Um, you know, it's getting into like fall and winter here in Canada, so it's not like ideal season to bike outside. Um, but I've definitely been doing a lot more spinning. I mean, almost all the cardio I've been doing now, other than at the track, like actually running, has been on the spin bike. So I'm getting on the spin bike three days a week, you know, for 45 minutes to an hour, an hour plus, um, whether it's doing sprints on there. Um, in terms of the sprints, I've been doing like 15 seconds. Well, I'll do like, say, 10 to 20 minute warm up kind of build into the warm-up, build into getting my heart rate up, like, you know, slowly, or 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, and then I'll do 15 seconds at, like, 120%, like, as if it's 100 meter, you know, blast in 15 seconds. And then I'll do 90 seconds between at, like, a good pace, keeping my heart rate up, but letting it come down a little bit from the sprint. Um, and then I'll do six to eight of those, and then another, you know, 10 to 15 minutes cool down from there, progressive cool down. I mean, if I'm not doing sprints, then I'll just get on there and try and, you know, get my heart rate good up, you know, 140, 145 beats a minute, maybe 150, you know, 100, 
120, 130 RPM on the bike and just maintain that as long as I can. Or, you know, I'm generally not going more an hour. So, you know, 50 to 55 minutes with like a five, eight minute cool down is generally what I've been doing. So, um, so yeah, in terms of cycling, cycling on a spin bike, not cycling on a real bike quite yet, but maybe in the future. What would be your most important values slash lessons you want to teach your future kids? Oh, we're getting into deep questions here. Um, you know, I think a, a good thing that I find is, you know, obviously getting ever more scarce in today's society is probably like work ethic, you know, like that if you want something like you're the master of your own destiny with what you put in, what you get out. And I think, you know, bodybuilding and even running now, I think these are great examples of kind of how those, you know, translate into life lessons. And like you can't out exactly what you put in, you know, and if there's something you want in life, you know, it's such like a cliche kind of thing, but it's so true. Like, you know, no one's going to do it for you. And if you want something, you got to go out and make it happen. So, you know, I think that's one thing that I would really want to instill into my children is, you know, not have spoiled kids that think things are given to them. Um, that if you want something, you got to work for it, you know, and I think you can start that young with, you know, even a podcast we were listening to the other day and just start that with, you know, very simple chores and kind of build onto that. Um, and then, you know, that they have a foundation of understanding that things aren't just given to them, you know, if they want to, you know, get a new something or if they want this or they want to do this, you know, um, that not everything comes for free. And that, you know, just basic chores and kind of building on chores as they get older, I think can be a very valuable life lesson for a kid, for sure. It's so funny, the like natural paternal and maternal answers. Yours is like, know that they're loved. and like. Well, my answer would be that like just them being themselves is enough and that they can trust themselves enough and be th- and know how to be themselves authentically so they can go after what they want. And then you, as the paternal, you're like, I want to instill work ethic. It's just interesting how it's so complimentary, you know? Sure. What are your top three meals you always like? Always like for sure. And I've been eating for breakfast like five out of seven days right now um, is like lox, like smoked salmon lox, like whether it's on a bagel with cream cheese or I've been just doing it on this like, you know, a little more healthy toast, um, toasted with cream cheese, sprinkle a little green onion on there. Green onion can be a garnish. (laughs) People that get that will get that. Um, So that's definitely one that I can eat every day forever and not get tired of. Well, I can't say that. I, I could probably get tired of it eventually, you know. You would always come back to it, though. But I would come back to it. I always like it. I mean, it's, it's a hard question for me to answer because I it, not gonna ask here. I ate the same thing for so long. I, I'm not really like – I haven't really experimented with too many things over a period of time to know I wouldn't get tired of them. Because, like, obviously, you know, I was eating, you know, chicken and rice meals, steak and rice, fish and rice, you know, eggs and oats, eggs and – or like oats and protein, like proats or, you know, something with sweet potato, something with white potato. Like I know all those kind of bodybuilder set meals. Um, but to say I would never get tired of any of those is certainly a lie. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I ate them every day in some capacity for a decade and a half. And now that I'm not competing, I have absolutely no interest in eating any of those. Um, you know, do am I still eating meat and rice meals in some capacity? Absolutely. But you know, if you saw like my Instagram story yesterday, you know, we made some kind of, you know, Mongolian beef, you know, like with sauce and get some vegetables and stuff on there, you know, like, yeah, that is a somewhat of a bodybuilder meal in its roots. But what we made that sauce out of, I absolutely couldn't be eating when I was in my bodybuilding years. So, you know, that would have been just like plain beef or with some seasoning or, with, you know, some kind of very low calorie, maybe done in like soy sauce or something. Um, you know, this had like a lot more like this was like made with like cornstarch and sugars, you know, like this was for flavor over everything in that aspect. So I don't know. I don't know if I have an answer to that, you know, like something I, it's not necessarily a food, but that I've been having more of is just like really good, like shakes, like a good shake with, um, you know, like a peanut butter, banana base, something like that. Like I've been doing ones with either the dark chocolate and chocolate, peanut butter, raw ISO, um, putting some almond butter in there, lots of ice. Yeah. Smoothies always hit. Yeah. Like you can, you know, whether it's post-workout or having one before bed, if you want a little more fats, a little less carbs, but you know, first thing in the morning, if you want to do a smoothie, maybe with berries or even the same thing, like I was saying, you know, I really like that chocolate, peanut butter, banana kind of combo. Um, you know, even when I was young and I would go to booster juice, that was kind of always the vibe I was going for. Um, 
So, I could yeah. never get tired of Greek salad. Yeah, a good salad is good. I've been having a lot of those. Um, I don't. Yeah, I definitely think that's something you would never get tired of. No. You know, is it something that I want to eat every day? Not necessarily, but like I could eat it every day. You know, so I mean, any of those kind of work. But I don't know if that really answers it. But I got a couple in there. Would you consider showing fertility protocols? Yeah, I mean, I actually talked about my fertility protocol that I'm doing currently on my Q and A. Um, so you can either go watch there, or I guess I can say it again here. Um, currently, I'm just doing. <clears throat> I think the protocol is 500 IU's HCG every other day, and then in the days in between, also on every other day schedule is 75 IU's HMG, um, and then I'm going to do 50 milligrams. I, I had a lot of people actually respond to this when I talked about it on the last one. Um, you know, there's a protocol called for 50 to 100 milligrams of Clomid, which I didn't really want to do because of the mood effect <laughs> that I would try it after if I wasn't successful with the HM, HCG and HMG on its own. Um, but a lot of people kind of tuned in and said you can use n um, which will be basically the same thing without the mood effects of Clomid. That's what they prescribe to women, Clomiphene. Yeah, so um, I, I thought Clomiphene, Citrate, and Clomiphene, I thought that was all kind of the same thing, so... Um, it but, probably is, but maybe it acts differently in the body, so the yeah, side effects are different. Yeah, the mood effects are, are what people people have said are, are definitely different. Um, so I'll, I'll get some of that and use that instead if that's going to be same effect in terms of my fertility, but without the mood effects. And why I said at the beginning is like the protocol calls for 500 I use of HCG is because I've probably been doing more like 750 every other day. Um, but I was doing that for quite a duration before... Um, I started the HMG or the Clomid, you know, after Toronto Pro, you know, when Melissa and I kind of knew that that was something we would, you know, want to start trying for in the near future, I started doing 500, 750, like every two to three days just to kind of like get that rolling. Well, yeah, because we had actually started talking about this before your decision to retire. Yeah. So I started that um, right after Toronto. And I remember asked, telling Matt, be like, hey, this is kind of what I want to do. Um, is it okay for if my, during my prep, I take this? And he said, yeah, no problem. I'll let you know when we need to remove it. So I was doing 500 um, to 750 I use every two to three days of HCG on its own for a while before already. Did you ever think about stopping at the end of this year after the O? Honestly, no. And I, I know this might be a hard thing to digest for people that haven't been there, but like, and I know to like someone looking in and be like, man, they'll get up on the Olympia one more time. Blah, blah, blah. I've already been up there many times, you know? Um, and for me doing another three months of something that I wasn't enjoying just really didn't like, I couldn't really justify it. It's like, okay, I'm doing it to get up there one more time. But like, why? Like, because other people think the Olympia is cool or other people want to see me up on the, on the Olympia stage. Sure. I can get it from looking from the outside in, um, but from my perspective, I'm like, look, I'm really not enjoying this like I used to anymore. I know that these other guys are really enjoying it. Let's leave this stage for them. I'm more excited to be doing other things. Um, and I'm also more excited to be at the Olympia as a fan, um, you know, supporter for Chris and other friends that I have there as a spectator, whatever it is, you know, just be part of the expo, not worry about, you know, doing show stuff. Um, you know, that's something I haven't really, part, you know, been at the Olympian partaking in it in a long time. So to be there from that aspect, from that way, you know, it was a lot more exciting to me than being there as a competitor. So, um, you know, when I paired that with the things that were pulling me away from bodybuilding, you know, plus how I was feeling and my excitement kind of changing from being there as a competitor to being as a spectator, knowing that all these other guys that are up there are very excited for this opportunity um, and excited to be on the Olympia stage. Um, it just really didn't make sense to get up there one more time. You know, I ended it on a good note of winning Toronto Pro, which was really a bucket list, bucket list kind of thing for me. Um, and, you know, winning those two big Canadian shows, Vancouver, what I won last year and Toronto this year. So, yeah, I was completely content with that. You know, content with what I'd done in bodybuilding. One more Olympia wasn't going to change anything for me other than three more months of doing something I wasn't enjoying. So, so yeah, no, never really thought of doing it after the Olympia. Okay, but we're at Nobility here. Time to go get in some real cold water. So we'll catch you inside there. There we go. Oh, that's nice today. Ooh. 
got some questions for me? Yeah, can you breathe? Yep. I hydrate well, but still cramp often. Any supplements that will help? Um, yeah, I mean, basic water might not always do it for you, but obviously, you're not getting the amount of electrolytes that you're going to lose in your sweat. So you want something that obviously has all your main electrolytes, like sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium even. And also something like we just came out with with raw is the new bum hydration bubble electrolyte. Um, so I've been consuming one pack of that during my training, one after, and one first thing in the morning. So two to three a day, depending if I'm training or not. Um, so yeah, something like that. You know, a basic Gatorade generally won't always cut it. Um, you know, their amount and type, you know, blend of electrolytes is not always the best. So yeah, I guess I mean it's a proper electrolyte product, like the bump electrolyte. Will you be doing some food challenges? Yeah, um, unfortunately I committed to doing the Baki One Chip Challenge, which I'm really, really, really not looking forward to. I'm not that with spicy food, but the feedback I've got from this is definitely not enjoyable. I definitely would like to do more, you know, like mukbang, mukbang, whatever you call it, stuff like that. Just some like maybe a you know, 15,000 calorie challenge or something like that. Um, but yeah, definitely on the horizon for sure. Christopher would compete in the open, where would he place? If he took his package from last, last year, or his whatever year was the fullest one, 2020, um, you know, I think he would be somewhere, maybe a little ahead of where Rafael Brando was last year, so probably beating how I look last year. You know, I put him in like kind of the eight, in this lineup, maybe like 9, 10, 11, 9, 10, yeah. Can the lack of sleep affect fat loss? Oh, absolutely. I mean, lack of sleep can spike cortisol. Cortisol is your enemy when it comes to fat loss. So, yeah, definitely. You know, and I find even for me, if you have one really good night of sleep, you can wake up considerably drier and leaner. And I mean, I even thought this was something for me when I was competing. Having a good nap between pre judge and finals, kind of dry out, um, and making sure I get a really good sleep the night before the show goes like a long, long way. So, yeah, when it comes to fat loss, sleep is absolutely your friend. And I've definitely found that with clients I've had that were working, say, like night shifts or like weird hours that was messing with their, you know, circadian rhythm and sleep schedule, um, it was definitely harder to get them in really good shape. Do you have an idea of where you want to be consistently in pounds from the downsize? This is probably the most common question I've got. Um, you know, since I said I want to run, since I've exited in bodybuilding. Um, and I don't really have an answer to this. You know, I I don't know how I'll feel until I get there, you know. Um, you know, I haven't been sub 240 since probably 2013 which was like my amateur career bodybuilding, maybe my first pro show, like when I was in contest shape, I was like 230. So it's been over a decade since I've been that light, you know, and at the times I was that light, I was like very, very lean contest shape. Um, so it's one of those things I'm just gonna kind of play by ear and see how my performance feels, um, especially on the track and running. Um, so yeah. You know, I don't know, it could be 230, it could be 240, it could be 215, it could be 205, I have no idea, but you know, that's something I'm just kind of playing my ear for now. What's the highest weight you think you can be and hit a sub-11? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'll ever actually hit a sub-11. You know, I set a lofty goal because I wanted to be something to really push me to take this training seriously and really dive in. Um, you know, I set it as a high goal. You know, I said that's kind of like my goal is starting into bodybuilding and saying I want to get a pro card. Um, which I know I've turned people for in the past, but I think it also is something that drives you to be dedicated to your goal. Um, you know, so I, I honestly, like I said with the last question, I honestly have no clue. Um, you know, I think to run that fast, I'd probably have to be pretty light. You're not gonna see many guys running, you know, 11 second flat or lower, over 230. Um, so I'm not quite sure, but definitely gonna be light, yeah. Do you use an Apple Watch or Fitbit to help track your cows and steps? Yeah, I actually just got a Fitbit Versa 4. Um, you know, I didn't go as crazy, like I know after I posted that, after my last track and it showed kind of like calories um, and my average heart rate and stuff, I had Matt Jansen and, the, and the, the fancy boys saying you gotta get a Garmin, which will definitely be the next step. 
you know, I know there's some really good garments out there that can really track all your pacing, you know, blood oxygen, do all that kind of stuff as well as be a little more accurate with your heart rate ranges. Um, so yeah, that's on the horizon, but I mean, I got a bit for support, so it's like about a $200 one. And it does a pretty good job with tracking my heart rate, average heart rate, pacing, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've been using that to track um, for the time being and when I'm getting on the bike to cycle as well. Next planned merch drop, last one sold out in like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, actually this morning, Melissa and I were sitting at the computer finishing up a couple of designs we have. How many do we got? Four? At least. At least four. Um, and I think there'll be some ones you guys really like. Um, you know, a couple we're going to do on some sweaters and crew decks, a couple on t-shirts. Um, some stuff I think you guys will really like, so those will be coming definitely by the end of this month. Um, we'll be done um, to hopefully get out in uh, October. What MG of Sins you rock? <laughs> uh, only six. Six is the only way to go, and I'm two at a time always now, so 12 milligram hit at a time. Um, but Sins actually have not been my favorite lately. I've been really liking the, uh, the Rogue Spearmint. They have way more flavors. So if you're some, someone that likes the Zins, go try the Rogue, Rogue Spearmint or any of their flavors, honestly. The flavors last like two hours plus. So even when the nicotine's gone, they still got a really good flavor to them. Um, but I'm always two at a time, so 12 milligrams at a time. Where did you learn everything you know about bodybuilding? From working with a lot of different coaches, um, you know, from my own research, from my own trials and tribulations. You know, just trying different things in the gym, different things with nutrition, knowing my own body, working with clients myself as a coach, um, and seeing different situations, how people's body reacted to them, and then kind of gaining that intel for myself. Um, but you know, over my career, I definitely think between Patrick and Matt Jansen, Patrick Tour and Matt Jansen is probably where I learned the most stuff that is really like the nitty gritty of like peaking process you know and stuff that's like the more finer details of bodybuilding but it's a culmination of 15 years of trying things myself working with different coaches i mean even there's things that you know when i worked with Greg, you said at the beginning that i like that i still you know use with some people you know um, you know i worked with matt a long time and matt obviously progressed in how he did things a lot over those years so there's things that you know i learned from him in 2015 that i like and that I've implemented with clients with myself or up to, you know, his most recent coaching as well with Patrick. So, um, or even stuff that, you know, I've had conversations with Fuad and guys on the podcast or listen to guests that Fuad has had on the podcast that I learned a lot from. Um, so yeah, just the culmination of things over, you know, a decade and a half in the industry. What role do high rep medium weight sets have in muscle building? Do they enhance quality? Quality? No. Um, you know, I think, Honestly, it doesn't matter a ton in terms of, you know, if your rep range is, say, obviously we're pertaining in rep ranges of hypertrophy. So let's say things over sets of 6, 7, up to 25, 30. Um, I think as long as you're bringing them to the same percentage of failure, I think they're all still very valuable. Um, you know, I think when you're using lighter weights, getting to a true failure can be harder, obviously, because... Well, that's not true, but, you know, bringing, say, doing 25-pound dumbbell curls, you know, might start to get hard, um, but it might be, you know, something different that's preventing you from getting to failure, where if you're doing an 800-pound deadlift, you know, you really know what true failure is. So, um, you know, I think they all can play a role. Um, and I also don't think you need to use kind of one set thing for everything, you know. I train my legs or my back. Uh, or sorry, legs or my arms in different rep ranges that I would train, train maybe my pressing, like my shoulder pressing, chest pressing, heavy rows. You know, if I'm doing, um, you know, something like a you know, certain leg training, I might be in more than 15 to 20 rep ranges for arm training. You know, I think arm training is something you really chase the pump for um, versus, you know, back training or chest pressing. You know, I might be more on that like eight to twelve rep range. So. Lowest amount of carbs you ate per day on prep? <laughs> uh, zero. Uh, my first prep I ever did, I kind of did on my own, um, and at that time, all I knew was less carbs the better, more cardio the better if you want to get body fat down. Um, so, you know, I did an entire 10, 12 week prep eating zero carbs, and when I mean zero carbs. I didn't even eat things with trace carbs. Like if it was nut butter, that is a few grams of little carbs in there, I didn't eat it. Um, but 
in my professional career, I'd say the lowest I probably got was, well, it's hard to say, you know, I did some shows with Brand New Set when I was turning pro that were pretty low carb, maybe 50, 80 grams of carbs a day. Um, you know, as I got bigger, I probably never went much lower than 150 grams a day. Um, but on average, you know, 150, 200 grams are probably the lowest I never go. Last question. What does your meals consist of two days out from a show leading up to the show? Um, well, two days out, you're probably starting your carb up process. Um, you know, unless there's still some water and body fat, you got to get off where you're someone that fills up easier. You're a smaller athlete that doesn't need quite as much time. Um, but I'm always in the camp of eat the same foods that you know and that got you there. So if your whole prep, you were eating rice and, you know, russet potato is your carb source or oats or cream of rice. Um, I don't think two days out is the time to be changing your food sources, doing anything crazy. You don't know how your stomach's going to react, so I would always keep with the same kind of foods. Um, so yeah, you know, at two days out, I'd probably be starting to build a bit in the carbohydrates. Um, you know, rice meals, protein might be coming down a little bit. So say I was eating 225, 250 grams of weight in my meals for protein there. Um, you know, that might come down to 150, 140, 175, depending. I'm kind of tapering that down. You know, you don't really need the protein at that point just a little bit to keep the blood sugar stable. Um, but the, the protein sources I'm putting in at that point are generally more fat heavy. So beef or salmon or whole eggs, um, something to kind of slow down the digestion um, and the assimilation of those carbohydrates a little bit. So you're not burning through them so fast. You know, this is that point too, when your body's really in overdrive metabolically. Um, if you're just eating fat carb sources and very lean protein sources, um, you'll find you'll kind of work through them very quickly. So, you know, I like to get a little more fats in. Protein will be up, uh, or be down a little bit, and uh, carbs will be up um, at that point. Um, you know, this is also the point where, you know, as you're increasing carbohydrates, you might be decreasing water intake a little bit. Um, it's kind of like a push and pull with water and with carbs. So, all uh, right, 12 and a half minutes, I think I'm going to Oh, I'm real frozen here. <laughs> okay. That was a good one. Twelve and a half. That was a personal best thing. I should get Melissa and ask me questions every time in the cold lunch because I honestly made it a lot easier when I wasn't thinking about how cool that was just answering questions all the time. So this might become a thing where she can just, we can do Q&As once a week when I get into the cold lunch. Uh, that might be a thing going for cold, Q &A, cold lunch q and So that made it a lot easier for sure. Okay, guys, my frozen ass is back from that cold plunge. I'm gonna, I don't know if anyone who's done cold plunges. Melissa never gets it, but I do. I get out of the cold plunge and I'll have for like 20 minutes, like convulsive shakes. Like whether I do it for three minutes or 20 minutes, I just get like for a good 20, 30 minutes after. I'm just like, <laughs> but feel good now. I'm thawed out now, feel good. Um, you know, especially with more running training, I found it really feels nice on the legs. So things are feeling nice and fresh right now. Um, but we're back at the house now um, in a little time crunch because I've got a haircut in like 25 minutes. So we're getting meal one in, get our supplements here. Um, so I posted on my story yesterday, but these are my morning lineup. So we got, you know, from the vitamin C, omegas, magnesium, turmeric, liver, NAC, zinc, B complex, K2, D3, and our new suntheanine, suntheanine. Um, so yeah, a whole bunch of different things here for, you know, different things for health. Like we got the, um, the liver and the NAC, obviously, you know, antioxidant support and stuff for your liver. You got some tube in the liver, you know, vitamin C, obviously. Um, you know, just general antioxidant, good for immune function. Omega-3s, you guys have heard how I talk about that. Um, you know, everything from helping with, you know, joints to cardiac health to even relieving anxiety symptoms in the higher doses. This is my absolute number one favorite supplement for everyone, any goal, all the time. Um, so definitely a big proponent of that. Um, I had a lot of um, questions about why I was using the magnesium in the morning and not just before bed. Um, I do use it before bed as well, paired with the Calm, which has a little more magnesium in it. Um, but I do take it in the morning because it does have some kind of mood elevating effects, um, you know, for your nervous system, helping calm your nerves, and a little bit for the anxiety. So I really like taking that in the morning. Um, turmeric, obviously, anti-inflammatory properties there. Also great for cardiac health. 
especially since I've been running more, a little more, you know, impact on the knees and ankles. Um, I've definitely been taking more of this. We got those. Zinc, obviously, just for immune system support. B complex, just for energy production. K2 and D3, also another two that I think are some of the most important for overall health. Um, you know, for cardiac function, vascular function, um, you know, everything like that. Um, you know, bone health, anything really with the D3. Um, and then the Suntheine is the new one we have, which, uh, you know, for helping improve fatigue, uh, brain function, kind of your mental acuity and sharpness. So a great one to take in the morning there. Um, so we got my load of pills, gonna get those in. And then we have meal one here, which has been pre pretty much my staple, it's a new type of different salmon. So excuse the different colors here, but so we got some smoked salmon on some of this fancy toast with a little bit of cream cheese. Um, and then just to add a little more protein there, we got a little bowl of Greek yogurt with some frozen wild blueberries. It's nice with the frozen ones that kind of defrost in there a little bit and the juices get into the Greek yogurt and you get a little bit of pop crunch on the blueberries. Gonna get this in, gonna get my hair cut and we will catch you guys when I'm back with a nice fresh haircut. See ya. All right guys, we're back. Got the hair all cleaned up. Um, I was an idiot. <laughs> For some reason I thought my haircut was at noon. I was like convinced it was at noon. Um, it ended up being at 11. So I had booked in to get hair cut and get my beard trimmed up a bit. But because I obviously missed my 11, got there a little later, um, showing that time to do the hair, but it's good. That was what was more neat. I could kind of deal with the beer myself. Um, so we're just back home now. I'm gonna go to the gym after this. Um, today's Wednesdays. Um, I've generally just been going doing spinning and a lot of stretching. Um, you know, just stretching for injury prevention, get a bit more of that flexibility back. Um, you know, difference between flexibility and mobility, obviously if you're doing mobility work, through active ranges of motion, um, which I do on the days at the track. Uh, but these days we're just doing, um, you know, like static stretching, flexibility work, you know, for injury prevention, uh, maybe a little bit of core work and then get on the spin bike for a good chunk of time. Um, but we're just back home now. We're going to make a little pre-workout meal. Gonna make a little wrap here. Um, so yeah, get this together, have a wrap with a little bit of ground turkey. I'll show you guys what's in that. Have some of these crispy minis, a little extra carbs. I'm not crazy hungry and I don't like a ton of food sitting in my stomach while I go spin. Um, so nothing too crazy, just one wrap, some ground turkey and whatever. A um, little extra carbs from the, the crispy minis. So I'm energized. Um, so we'll get this together and then we'll be eat this, show you guys my pre-workout and we'll get to the gym. So there we go. Got some turkey, avocado, cheese, mayo, green onion, tomato, 
and then a little bit of the Nando's. I think that's hot, right? Yeah, Nando's hot. So I'm gonna wrap this baby up. We got some of these. Have a couple, couple handfuls of those. Have this guy, uh, and then we're gonna get our pre-workout in. We'll get to the gym. All right. So before we get this meal in here, um, this is what I've been generally drinking with my pre-workout on the days I'm going to spin. Um, just having one of the sea bum or the bum energy here. This is the citrus. That's focusing, but wherever it is. Um, the citrus flavor, so there's a couple different flavors. There's this, there's the cherry one, and the orange one, they all taste really awesome. Um, so on the day that I'm spinning, you know, I don't want pre-workout with like a bunch of pump ingredients in it. I'm obviously trying to mitigate pump in my legs when I'm doing that kind of training. So I'm having this, and then I'll show you the rest of the stuff I'm having, you know, for power endurance ingredients, stuff like that, and the drink I have a little closer to training. Um, but yeah, having one of these while I eat my meal, um, just and then a little bit of water. Um, so get this meal in, and we'll catch you back for the pre. Okay, going to show you guys what we got <clears throat> going on for pre right now. Um, so you saw before I drank the bum energy. So there's like 140, 100 something milligrams of caffeine. Those 150. Um, so then all I'm going to have with that, my pre, five grams of creatine. We'll do two scoops of the Pico two, um, and then I just have 16 milligrams of ephedrine. So just two tabs of ephedrine, um, and then in my intro I'll mix up separately. We'll do one of the bum electrolytes, the Tropical Punch. Do that with the Tropical Punch Intra and then the Watermelon EAAs. Um, so I'll get this guy in me, get my Fedrin in me, get this mixed up in a separate bottle, um, and then we'll be ready to go hit the spin bike. So we'll see you guys at the gym. Also, for the, with the carbs, um, per one scoop of the Intra is 25 grams of carbs, 25 grams of highly branched cyclic dextrin. There is a little electrolytes in there from the coconut water powder, the sea salt, and then some added um, magnesium, sodium, potassium as well. But <clears throat> with that 25 grams of carbs, I'll put about generally 50 grams of carbs in there. If I'm doing a spin, maybe a little less, like maybe a scoop and a half, 40 grams of carbs. When I'm going to do the track practice, I'll generally do about 75 for a two-hour practice. So that's what we're doing now. So get two scoops of that, scoop of this, one of these packs. We'll be all ready to spin. Also, these are the wraps that I was eating. Um, 12 grams of protein per wrap. So to add a little bit, because I probably only had like four or five ounces, not even four ounces of protein in there um, from the turkey. So like, you know, 28 grams or so of protein, whatever that is, plus this. So probably about 40 grams total. Um, it's a plant-based protein. So you see there, pea protein, rice protein, whole wheat flour, etc. 11 grams of carbs, 12 grams of protein. So those are the wraps I'm using there. La Tortilla Factor for one's protein. All right, guys, what's up? So we just finished our session at the gym there, did an hour on the spin bike. Um, felt really good. Things are definitely getting, I wouldn't say easier because as they get easier, I feel like I'm able to push myself harder. Um, so I'm going at, you know, a higher resistance um, and a little faster turnover um, and keeping my heart rate in the same zone. So felt really good. Did an hour on there today. Uh, did a little stretching. My camera, I was filming the spin, but I'll, I'll kind of like, time loop that but that camera shuts off after like 15 20 minutes so just got the first little bit of that but you don't want to watch an hour spin anyways um so we're back home now I'm going to make my post-workout shake um the same one i put on my store the other day but i'll show you guys here all right so we got a whole lot of ice in there there's a little bit of liquid egg white i'm out of almond milk i'm gonna put just like a tiny bit of water um, and then we're gonna put full banana like one spoonful of this uh, 0% vanilla Greek yogurt, the dark chocolate ISO, and can't forget a good heaping spoon of almond butter. So we're gonna get this all blended up together and I'll show you guys when it's all done. All done here, it's got a pretty nice, like thick texture to it. The Greek yogurt I find helps give it like a little better texture, same with the, the liquid egg white. I'm not putting either of those really for the protein content. Uh, maybe a little bit of Greek yogurt for it and, and the sugars in it, but really just for the texture. Uh, makes it like a nice creamier kind of texture like that. So going to get this in. Um, then we got a podcast to do at 7.30, 6.25. So we'll get that done, get a meal in in the meantime as well. I'll show you that. We'll catch you in a bit. Also wouldn't be a post-workout if I didn't have one of these cookies I made the other day. I hadn't baked in like 
20 years and I really didn't follow the instructions at all. I kind of just dumped all the ingredients in and just winged it and it actually turned out really good. It's like a peanut butter oatmeal cookie, but they're actually freaking delicious. So I'm going to have maybe one of these, just a little extra carbs. And I mean, what, a, what am I fucking getting? I mean, just because they're delicious. So get one or two of these in. They're real good. All right, guys, we're back for the next meal. So I had that post-workout shake I showed you guys last. I'm Melissa's home, so she made me a little bit of these turkey meatballs. We didn't weigh any of this. There's like, I don't know, four or five, five and a half, six meatballs. I don't know. It's probably a good chunk of protein. A um, little bit of jasmine rice. And then like everything I eat recently, it seems like I'm putting green onion on everything. It's a, it's a great garnish. And then have a little cucumber in here too. And this sauce, I think is the same sauce actually that we cooked the, um, that like Mongolian beef that I put on my Instagram yesterday. I had a lot of people ask me for the recipe. I'll try and find it. It was something I found on Google and I didn't save. So I have to go back through my internet history and try and find it on there. Um, but this is a great sauce, kind of just drizzled on the top. Um, so I'm going to get this in me. Uh, I'm going to have probably one more like snack thing in a little bit. We're just doing the podcast. I'm going to do the podcast here soon. Um, so I'm going to get this in. Be back for next meal. So we'll catch you guys in a bit. All right, folks, we're here. It's uh, just past 10. We finished the podcast. Uh, good one tonight with Mike, Paul, and Fuad. Uh, now we're just going to make our last little meal here. I'm just going to make myself a nice turkey sandwich. <laughs> a little turkey of already mayo, Dijon mustard, lettuce, um, and then we're going to have a little bit of Greek yogurt and berries to get a little more protein in there. Going to slap this bad boy together, get that in me. Uh, I'll show you guys all my subs that I take at night. And we're going to hit the sack, get to bed nice, nice and early, 1030. This is a rarity for me. You know, during my competitive years, I was, I'd be lucky to be getting to bed by midnight, one o'clock. I'm um, getting all the food in. So looking forward to this meal, get her in, get some subs in and uh, get to bed. percent Greek yogurt and some berries and we got this nice delicious sandwich here. Can you get this bad boy in? I uh, said eat this. I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> this looks delicious um, and then we'll be back with you in two minutes for our nighttime sups. All right so we got all the nighttime sups lined up here. Um, just made it easy for you guys to see. So we got prostate, take three, heart, D, D2, D3 and K2 sorry. Magnesium, calm, the inositol, turmeric, omega-3, zinc, NAC, and the red yeast rice. <clears throat> um, you know, obviously some of these are self-explanatory for the prostate, heart, um, K2, D3, I explained this morning. Magnesium, same thing, um, you know, some calming effects there. Good helps with sleep as well. Um, the calm has some magnesium in it as well. You can see there another 150 milligrams, and then you have a little bit more nostal in there, uh, taurine, theanine, GABA, and then the 5-HTP. It's a great one. Nostal as well, turmeric for inflammation, omega-3, zinc, NAC, and the red yeast rice is for helping uh, keep your lipids and cholesterol levels good. So then I wash all that down with my raw sleep. So I got one scoop there. Not a ton of water. I like the flavor pretty strong and I don't need very much to get all these down. So take this bad boy, get those in, and we're off to bed. So we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in for my full day here, showing you guys kind of what I've been eating um, the last little while. You know, obviously very different from what I was eating, you know, when I was competing. You know, a little more freedom with my diet, but you know, still making sure I'm getting, you know, some good healthy foods in, enough protein to support my training uh, and my recovery. And then from the carb and fat standpoint, um, you know, I'm kind of just going by feel, you know, what I think I need to get my weight down, um, but also still enough to, you know, give myself enough energy to train. Um, you know, I kind of go in days where, you know, I can tell, especially the days I go to the track or go hard on the spin bike, 
Um, you know, I can tell if I don't get quite enough carbs in then you know, maybe get a little more after training or the next day, I'll eat up a little more and then kind of ride it like there and maybe go a little lower until I feel like I'm starting to get a little lower in energy and then I'll just eat a little more. So I'm just very intuitively kind of going, I'm not counting the calories or weighing anything. Um, you know, I'm so sure someone could add it up all in the comments. I'm sure somebody would do that, but I have absolutely no idea. Just trying to get in, you know, approximately what I think is adequate protein for me. And yeah, that's it. You know, anyone's asking why I'm still taking all these supplements. You know, a lot of them obviously are for general health and that I'll continue to take after. You know, like I think for anyone, you know, taking like the K2, D3, magnesium, calm, and also tall, turmeric, omega-3, zinc, you know, or all have positive benefits for everybody, whether they're competing or not. You know, obviously other things when you have, you know, the world of bodybuilding, PDs and stuff like that, there are other things that are more to kind of, you know, combat effects of some of those things, which obviously, you know, that's changed for me dramatically. So I'm gonna keep those in until I get blood work done, probably in the next two weeks when I go down to Florida at Revive, I'll get some everything done there, see where all my numbers are, and then kind of adjust my supplementation accordingly after that. You know, and a lot of these things, like I don't have bad cholesterol levels, you know, or like for, you know, a lot of these supplements, I was taking more of preventatives than to address issues. But I think that's why I've been able to keep a lot of my numbers good. Obviously, a lot of that is a genetic component. A lot of it is because I've been very diligent with my supplementation, not starting taking certain types of supplements when I was already having an issue that I'm trying to combat. You know, I think supplements are a lot better used as preventatives and to keep those numbers good. But once you have them in a bad range, it can be a lot harder to get them back down. So that was kind of the way I was looked at it, you know, taking things like the heart, the liver, the kidney, you know, prostate, anything like that. Like whether I have the issues or not, I've always kept them in, especially when there was PED use, you know, just to make sure I was kind of dotting all my T's and could <laughs> dot all my eyes and cross all my T's. But yeah, over time, I'll probably start to taper a few of those out. You know, some of them I still like for their ingredient profiles, like the heart, I think is still a great product, which I'll probably continue to use. But the liver and something with like Tudka in it, you know, where I'm not taking any oral steroids or, you know, really any significant injectables, I don't think there's really any place for that. So I'll probably taper ones like that out or the red yeast. You know, if my, my lipids are still in a good level, then I'll probably start to go that out because I don't think they're going to get worse. That's kind of where we're at for now. Uh, but thanks for tuning in, guys, and we will catch you guys next time.